All right, good morning, Rabbi Sai. So we're up to Parshas Tazriyah Mitzora. It's our Erev Shabbos Parshas Drasha. It's a very, very big minhag in Yeshiva. And I want to talk about something real quick before that. I want to talk about this fear of beard situation. Um, it's making me... Uh, what's the word? Not crazy. Um, suicidal. So I have a whole new level of appreciation for people, not for people who are Lubavitch or who are forced to do it, but for people who voluntarily grow out their beards because there's literally nothing more uncomfortable in the world than having hair growing out of your face. So now that that's off my chest, well, off of really off of my face, well, it's still on my face, but now that we got that out of the way, we could talk about the Parsha. So Parsha's Tajriya Mitzvah. So what's it about? So it's about Saras, right? So Saras is a huge problem amongst Klai Yisrael because Saras mostly comes from Lashon Hara, and what do you know? That's pretty much uh, all Jews do now. But apparently, even back then, in the days of the base of Midrash, it was the Yitzhahara, so you shouldn't feel so bad. It wasn't just the Yitzhahara now for your, for, your, uh, for mommy to be on the phone all day long hawking. It used to be something that even in the olden days they were doing, but they were, didn't do it on the phone. I don't know, but they maybe styrofoam cups, or they, just, they all went down to, to, to use their washboards by the river, and, uh, you know... They got to, to, to chirping. So, imagine if they had Saras nowadays. You'd all be completely effed. And we'd all be effed. So would I. So, because of that, it's Baruch Hashem that we don't have Saras. We should really thank Hashem. And we should bench an extra Gomel that we don't have Saras now. You, ma- you can imagine, you know that they say that on the Shidduch resumes, uh, back in the days, uh, the girls had to put on there if they had Saras or not. You know, because obviously the boys wanted to know. You know, am, am I am I going to be ready to a girl that speaks Hashanah. So, can you imagine the busha uh, that, that, that the girl was going, and her family was going through when, when they're filling it out on the resume and, and they have to write, they have to check off the box next to Tsaras. It was a very, very horrible, uh, emotionally draining experience for the whole mishpacha, especially the younger siblings who spent the whole day cleaning up the tent. So, because of that, you shouldn't do Lashnar. You should just, that should be enough. But, the mice of people still were slipping and they were doing it. And so how did it work? So what was the way that you found out if you if you, yeah, you were diagnosed even? So who would you call? Like in those days there wasn't, they, they, they had, it was sort of like the, in in the West where they had like the barber and the doctor and the dentist. So the coin god was like that guy. The coin god was like, the navi and the and the doctor and the and the and the uh, probably the barber, and so he would go and he would tell you if you had saras. So two things that are important here. One is never piss off a coin. Okay, let's say you got in a fight with a coin. I don't know whatever it was. He parked in your in your spot or he sat in your mugum kabua, right? So now you guys got some beef and you know you just don't like your mishpacha that you don't go to the same to the same places where you know you'll see them and, and, and it's, it's very awkward. Now Mashiach comes in all of a sudden you have this poison ivy like poison ivy ish type of stuff everywhere. And in those days they didn't have calmine pink calmine lotion in the doctor's office. In the nurse's room you had to shm- what did you smear? You had to go to Coin Gadol and he would handle it. So they call Coin Gadol and now the guy that you're that you're having beef with shows up at your house. So well, you, you can only assume that if he's if he's if, if he's you know, got some, got got some game that he's gonna go and he's gonna tell you you have straws even if you don't. I mean that's what anyone that's what I would do. So you want to make sure not to piss off a coin so that you don't get misdiagnosed because once you have straw then it's a, you know then you have to go. I don't know, I don't know how it works knows to get rid of it. There's like so many different ways to get rid of it, but um, it's very it's a very huge bush barabim type of thing. So you didn't want to do that. And also if you had a let's say you have a coin. Uh, who who didn't go? I don't know if it was like chassa classes type of thing. If there was just like coin gadol classes, but like let's say you have a coin who's really he's his mom is not so sure if it's Saras. So that's why it's very important to pick the right coin. Because if it was me, I would never tell you that I didn't know if it was Saras. I honestly I would look at it and I'd be like, it's got the red right around it, and there's yeah, you can see some swelling. And are you dizzy? Yep, that's Saras. Like that's exactly how I would do it. So you don't want to have that type of coin come to your house. Also, houses, they even said that the house has got Saras. So that means, imagine nowadays people spend millions of dollars uh, at, whole, at do, doing doing construction to their houses and making them nicer than the one next door. And all of a sudden, your beautiful bay window and a new roof is covered in, uh, covered in poison ivy. 
right? Or leprosy, whatever you call it. So that's a huge busha also. So for all these reasons, stop saying Lajan Hara. Everyone's very, very, very worried about uh, about a lot of other things in Torah, but obviously Lajan Hara is the biggest deal because you actually get uh, pimples from it. So um, that's the drasha, guys. Just be very careful. All right, you guys, have a good one. We're going to pick up next week. Um, still a reminder about the Lag Boomer trip. Don't forget to get your permission slip signed by your parents. If they're not signed, we'll only take you if we know your parents aren't the type to freak out. All right, you guys.